Welcome to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Dan. Samantha's here, and we love it when these gentle people uh, adorn themselves on our couch because they normally bring us delicious treats. Yep. It is our friends from Hollabox Willow Tree Cafe in historic downtown Sanford. Yep, Chef Pat and Eric are here. How you guys doing? What's going on, guys? Happy holidays. Doing good. So, speaking of the holidays, I feel like um, Hollabox season starts and... You can't spell holidays without <laughs> Hollabox. Yeah. Like, Eric, write that down. <laughs> Something like that, right? <laughs> ha! It like starts in October and goes through Christmas. It's like peak Hollabox season. It, it uh, sort of. So we actually go through kind of Easter with uh, oh, right, okay. Carnival and uh, <laughs> Carnival Fasching. In Germany, Carnival but, uh, Fasching is that, <laughs> what is that, is that? that? big-breasted German <laughs> yes. girls wear uh, <laughs> pretty much in a <laughs> and then they do the parade, and yeah. it's like nudity is okay because it's that's their culture. But in in Durndles, but they do they do celebrate. They dress up and wear big costumes. There's seven full days. Each day's got a theme. I know Rose Monday is big. Uh, it starts on the Thursday and then ends on the, oh, on the what? Wednesday. And there are a lot of people going, ha, 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 ha. I've ah. never heard about German carnival. Uh, carnival. In, uh. in Cologne, in Cologne, it's a uh, very, very big culture is carnival. Because when I think of carnival, huh. I think a brown woman <laughs> on Brazil float, there. tiny yeah. G-string, lots of crystals all over her, and <laughs> oh, she's twirling yeah. with a headdress. Yeah, Amazing. but that didn't start till like 47, so where'd it come from? <laughs> yeah, okay, all right, all right. So uh, let's talk Christmas and Advent calendars because I appreciate you bringing some. It's been a tradition. Of my, course, my boys were actually. Wait, 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 wait. He didn't say these are ours. Oh. I mean, they get, <laughs> the, the assumptions yeah, are. How ours. dare you? My, my, that's my, actually my, for man. Sam Travis. My God, yeah. you know what? I have never been more embarrassed. Uh, this guy just assumed you were bringing treats for him. Uh, well, I thought, I mean, last year, yeah. I promised my uh, You did this last, well, last year. last year was your year. This year's my year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was, and they're like, where's our- I'm stealing our your boys at <laughs> Yeah, she's <laughs> taking them. Um, and uh, Hollabox uh, has for the admin calendar for sale. Obviously, the, the market does. Sure. Um, and these are- What if, are the popular if, holiday items? But if you want the traditional ones, I'll say, like, this is, like, kind of the ones I got when I was growing up. So if you want that that nostalgia nod instead of now I'm not dissing this but there is like we are rampant now with the new age advent calendars. It's not SpongeBob socks. It's a little piece of chocolate, but it's something yeah. to look forward to. Yeah, mm. I'm I'm pro little piece of chocolate over advent calendar that basically just barfs out plastic garbage. Have you <laughs> yeah, seen this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, and they're huge. They're like as big as your child, and every day they get a toy. I'm like, no. My kid wanted a Nightmare no. Before Christmas, which no. I know you hate. Uh, Nightmare I do Before hate Christmas. It, yeah. I've come to a point uh, where now I can say calendar. that openly. That I hate the Nightmare <laughs> There's like before 50, Christmas. 60 bucks, and it's crap that either my dog's gonna eat or my wife's gonna throw it away when they're not <laughs> yeah, looking it's so it's plastic like basically they fill the advent calendar which is cardboard full of little plastic toys you would get in a happy meal uh -huh. and they give you like i don't know 30 of those so then your house just becomes a garbage house yeah yeah, yeah. and then i'd rather have the delicious german chocolate made by a you know 100 year old chocolate factory yeah that's this is better which is way better it's just way better also every time my kids get a tiny plastic hunk of garbage i hate, I hate they're every i look at them like that is going in the landfill <laughs> like yeah. in, i mean as soon as you throw it on the floor it's just going straight to and, the dump and the future doesn't care about it because we were driving past a dump and my wife said hey Maisie look that's a trash mountain and she goes that's awesome let's make bigger <laughs> ones I'm like no <laughs> we're trying to get rid of the trash mountain she's yeah, like yeah. no we're gonna make my generation's gonna make the tallest trash mountain we're the kings of trash and I'm like oh god what have we done <laughs> I imagine Wally like putting it in a bin <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like that's what's gonna happen yeah. that's gonna it's happen happening. okay but so like these, you can get your advent calendars. These are in the market. Right. So if people want to get these, they just roll down. Oh, there's also games on the back. Like a find a mistake. I love a good find a mistake. And yeah. uh, St. Nick's coming on uh, December 6th. He might have a couple of those to pass out uh, to oh. kids and stuff like that. All right. All right. So you guys have a... I, uh, do you uh, say Santa helper? Like, how do you classify this? Uh, say, Just say Santa. Nick, yeah. Say Nick. Oh, that's even better. Just say Saint Nick. So, and that's going to be a hollow box. Yeah, yeah. hollow box. So that's Monday the sixth. Uh, yeah. What time? Uh, five o'clock. Five awesome. o'clock will be Saint Nick. He'll march through the restaurant. There'll be uh, opportunities for photos, Sweet. and it's full like old school. Like looks like a pope almost with the big tall hat. And oh, the rod. great. 
uh, not like a traditional Santa Claus. Yeah, um, our Santa Claus kind of, he's like in like red velour present giving tactical gear. <laughs> but their like traditional German Santa Claus does look more like either the Pope or he's the lead singer in the band Ghost. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, he's yeah. got the huge Pope hat. Does he have the... Right, yeah, yeah. The big, the big crooked staff. Yes, the staff. Like that, like, th- like I like Popey Santa because he looks like he can F some stuff up. Like he can like, get at you with a bow staff or something and he's got his uh his buddy krampus that comes and kind of does away with all the uh ne'er dwellers the night before don't so. they put doesn't krampus put young children in a bag uh yeah and then uh, drags them to hell yeah, yeah. He, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the hell part i forgot yeah, about yeah. He Thank him you, with his, his little uh his sticks I um I've been wanting to show my son's <laughs> grandpa. I'm gonna show him but I, this year. I don't think they're tough enough. Give him some red. Let's yeah. do the Krampus challenge. <laughs> like I, sit if down I think with I, a video of her TikTok. And it's ultimate child abuse uh, documentation. I don't want to do it for myself because <laughs> then I have the next week of them Krampus r- nightmares. Yeah, running out of the room. Krampus is in there. <laughs> <laughs> my seven year old is like, still scared from Krampus last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then Krampus I'm like, is terrified. Seven year old. <laughs> you showed your So we, we have we have a live Chef, Krampus. Chef kids, Chef, are tough, yeah. Chef kids boil water at two. <laughs> <laughs> tough yeah, ass kids. Yeah. <laughs> he had that kid with a schnitzel roller, like one. Chef like, a my son. kids never used a stroller <laughs> at Disney. Yeah, kids in a hospital, he put his hand through the schnitzel <laughs> roller at three years of age. Like, uh, you could cook a pork shank. <laughs> yeah. Dude, tough. T- a like, pork shank. Cooking kids are tough, right? Yes. Because yeah. I think cooking kids realize the process of what they're doing when they have a chef dad, and then they're like, like, I don't need a dad. I know how to cook now. I'm not, so there's an ele- element of knowledge there, right? I'll take that. Yeah, they get like, this oh, is, I know how to sustain life. I can on. eat uh, calories. This is embarrassing, but my son's 100% would not know how to operate the oven or the microwave or anything. Okay, like, hold on. They couldn't cook. They can't microwave? If they were like, the we will kill your you- parents if you if you can't boil some water, they wouldn't figure it out. They have oh, no man. idea. You never took a... Well, no. You, you know, you're not a... See, I'm into that. So I like cooking. Amazing. Whatever I'm into, naturally, Maisie can come over and want to do what I'm doing. So yeah, like, but she doesn't know how to like... She knows how to cut with a sharp knife. Um, she has Maybe her own. They, they get cut something yeah. to play doh. <laughs> like I'm trying she to think. To do the my kid chopped parsley last night for my soup. parsley. <laughs> Can your kids get their own? This is a big one in the dentist house. I'm not even joking. I don't. Even, I'm. Pretty, I would bet against the fact that my sons wouldn't even know what parsley is. No, there's no way. <laughs> like if I asked them what is parsley, they'd be like, no. Clue. That's our friend at school. <laughs> she air fries her own chicken nuggies. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. oh, dude, that's air frying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Maisie can get... She, there's a big one in the dentist household. Can your sons go to the cabinet, use their stool, get up, get a cup, fill it with ice, yes, go to the water, yeah, then get yeah. their own drink? They, yeah. get, they do that. That's, if they can get their own drink... I, I scream, get your own drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, get their, their I'm own. pooping! Get your own drink! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they can do that, and they can get bread, <laughs> or whatever else. Like, <laughs> what? They, uh, Rush, that's a Russian. The, the, that's a Russian junior. When you can snack. get water and bread, a Russian <laughs> junior. That's what they, they call that. So, uh, Pat, let's talk uh, sneakers, because uh, you are a sneaker Nothing member. more German than <laughs> sneakers. <laughs> I know, we're off he topic is, uh, a little bit. one of the admins in the BDM Sneakerman group. Oh, yeah. He is Shout indeed. out BDM Sneakerman. Yeah. So, how many sneakers do you have? We've talked about this before, right? Uh, I talk about my shoes way too much. Mm. I, I've, uh, how do you store them? Close to 60 them? pairs. In boxes. In your closet, just stacked? Nah, my back room, there's just a wall with stacks of boxes. My wife got me the nice clear cases that I can put the ones without boxes on display. Let's talk maintenance. Yeah. So you're wearing, what what, uh, shoes are you wearing today? Uh, Jordan 1 High Pollens. Okay, Jordan 1 High Pollens. I'm guessing pollen because of the color. Correct. Uh, Will... You when you're when you're putting them on and when they are exiting your feet, do you have a workflow that you use in order to to maintain the posterity? You know, you want it to look good. Sure. So as soon as they come out of the box, they get unlaced, and uh, if I'm going to wear them, uh, I don't unlace them until I'm going to wear them, and I usually don't take them out of the box. Is that until to I'm keep the them. shape? Uh, yeah, I keep the toe box things in the shoes okay that, see this is what i'm into like when i take them off the i put them back in every do. time <laughs> but I, the, I spray the shoe with water protector he hates this stuff by the way because this water is protector the, this, I is thought like, was a scam. this is like you what you tell people i've got sh- shoes from high school that i still wear and that stuff does work that's it, dope it, it, it works your shoes are just boats and your uh where you put your shoes are just boat covers to him like it's two boats <laughs> two boat covers you know what i mean like oh, he's yeah. not it doesn't matter how mildy they are mildy 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 is 
<laughs> sure. <laughs> Mil- he loves mildew so much that he's named it Mildy and he dates it. That's, what, that's where we're at now. Uh, but no, seriously, this week. the process you're talking about with your shoes of like, Taking them, this is so Daniel, you take them out, you unlace them, you put them on. When you're done with them, you take them off, you wipe them down with a magic eraser or something. I don't 100%. know. 100%. You spray them they, down. So they have they have shoe cleaning kits. It comes with like a ShamWow towel. Okay. And a little soft bristled brush and solution. And if they get dirty, I hit them. They, they have sneaker wipes. Uh, I use baby wipes too, but because like if you get a little stuff, just. Yeah, yeah. You wipe them off. My, my wife can't understand it. She can't fathom it. She's on your team, Tom. Okay. Yeah. Like, oh. like I'll stop in the middle if like if I get a piece of dirt, I'll stop in the middle. Like right now, like yeah, you like the... stop. Yeah, yeah. I'm like I can't. Like these these uh-huh. I have on today are, and I don't really do ath- like athletic shoes, but it's something I want to I want to go into your world a little bit. So I'm looking at you and Sam for some guidance. I traditionally wear Vans. And I have a huge collection of Vans. Sure. I have like crazy ones. I have on Descendants Vans today, and these shoes are about 11 years old. But they don't look 11 years old you know, because- you take care of them? I put them back in the Descendants box. They're a little dirty on the edges, but that's just because they're so damn old. Like, I don't think you can prepare, like, I don't think you can- Ye- Yellowing happens. Yeah. Uh, it's just, yeah, some shoes just age well, some don't. But uh, you think Pat and I are crazy. No, no, everybody's into what they're into, and I actually, I like that you- Chat room with a good point. This is Norm says, if you ain't wearing them, they're just Funko Pops. That's true. Well, that's got enough the- of those, too, so. <laughs> Some oh, shoe collectors. No, he re- now, Tom really can't understand Funko Pops. I have wrestling figures, so. Because, again, it goes, back to, it goes back to plastic, and he hates plastic. So let's talk about that because some shoemen uh, don't wear their shoes and are against even uh, like wearing them at all. I'm anti shoes, but I love them as art. <laughs> Where do you land on that? Uh, yeah. Do you have any pairs you never adorn? Uh, <laughs> never I've, put on. I've got so many that I haven't worn them, but I I plan on wearing everything but like two or three pairs that I have. All but three. Yeah, like all one's but a pair of yeah. Kobe's, and they're never going to make Kobe's again. So, oh, they're not. No, I hit the wife and Nike had a big falling out. So, oh, wow. So I'll probably never wear those, and then just another couple pair. Do you have any w- <clears throat> shoes that are worth anything, <laughs> like a bunch of money? You got any shoes that are worth anything, Let me tell you. Let me, let me, let me, let me say. I don't know why when did you become a Christmas bum in New York City? <laughs> you got anything for me? I'm going to eat this bird. <laughs> it's happening. Dressed. <laughs> Yesterday. Uh, uh, nothing's worth anything unless somebody's willing to pay for it. Uh, right but I've <laughs> uh, a, a couple pairs theoretically are worth you know a little more than double, maybe a triple what, That's good. what I paid for them. Like the like the Kobe's. Have you ever bought any where you were like instant buyer? I have. I bought some shoes where I'm like I instantly started like feeling like oh man, why did I blow that money? Yeah, but then I uh, get them in and I feel better about it. Okay, <laughs> all right. You look at them and uh, and you clean them. Yeah, what's the biggest <laughs> what's the biggest top <laughs> deal you've ever found? I found a deal two weeks ago where I got a pair of those uh, Anderson Pack or Pack um, signature edition Vans. Sure. That he released. I don't know. They're like one hundred and fifty dollars, but I found them for forty nine dollars at the outlets. Oh yeah. It was in my size. The but the box was like nobody was like touching anything because the box was like shredded and looked all weird. But if you got past the weirdness and opened up the box, in there were beautiful limited edition shoes. Let me ask you this. If you're a proper shoeman, is it important that all your shoes are the same size? Uh, different shoes have different fits. Oh, that's a good uh, question. But but they all have to fit you, right? Yeah, I don't buy shoes if the, if I can't if I can't wear them or my kids or my wife can't wear them. You ever so, gotten a pair in that you were jazzed on but the fit was wrong and you sent them back? Uh, I, I, I'll trade them or something. Right, I right. try to keep them. Yeah, I would too. I try to flip them myself because I don't want to send them yeah, back. Yeah, like if I got them, I want them. So. Right. So let's talk about, I I mentioned the hollow box experience We like to jump all around and we're know, exhausted with shoes. <laughs> I hate shoes now. So boring. No. And I say that it's it's more like an experience than, a, you know, than going to a regular restaurant. I can't even call it a restaurant. My mood. Like a restaurant to me is like any of the chain steakhouses. You, you can spend do. hours with That's, us. Yeah. Yes, you can. Because so, there's multiple rooms and people and things to eat and desserts and beers. and. So let me hear your recommendation. I, I Let's say I, I go with my wife and kids Ooh. to hollow box and i want like give me the your recommendation of what i should get for dinner and you know the, the kids always have a great time at hollow box because said you have a, an unbelievable King, kids menu tell me if i'm right on on picking up what you're laying down he wants the uncle herschel's favorite from cracker barrel <laughs> but he wants it at hollow box 
So what would you? Because they have their they have their signature item, right? Like you guys, what is the thing? But then it also they mix in maybe the holidays. And yes. Is there something special that I should get uh, that maybe is a little bit uh, themed for the holidays? Uh, so for Krampus night, we uh, we do a couple special things. Uh, we make a, a beet gravy, but we call it blood gravy because yes. it's that nice, vibrant red brown. Uh, blood color red brown that's what all florida people are the color <laughs> that, that people try to achieve it, is red brown it, <laughs> it's because we all got indian in us yeah, yeah every yeah, single yeah, one yeah. of us don't you forget <laughs> it and then you stand in a river and just get red brown up on top uh, and we'll have like uh we do krampus and saint nick cake balls uh so naughty and nice cake balls nice uh and then the like krampus bread i think it's like krampus shaped bread and what is this right here we got a couple snacks what is that yeah. loaf of Hold something on. That how do you like do a, a krampus shaped bread you shape it you cut it and shape well, it. The, the, like does it, it look like, like a his whole oh, yeah, body or yeah, like just horn, horns like horns with arms and legs and no, then you put like, like raisins in the thing like so you can have like a body almost like a snowman with a krampus head but okay i'm gonna take a hot take right here and you're not expecting it nobody uh. here is I like raisins in my bread, I and I'm raisins. not afraid to admit it. I can say it. I like a hot raisin baked into my bread. Ho uh, raisins. I got into debate on uh, Thanksgiving break real quick. Uh, Holiday House ham, the raisin glaze for the ham. Am I crazy? You, Daniel, you know, right? Yes. You, it's you, now Cooks, but Holiday House in Deland. Yeah, it was a thing. It was yeah. like it was like a cinnamon brown sugar raisin glaze. Do they glaze. still do it at Cooks? I I don't know. They they were closed on Monday, so Dude, I you're kind of blowing my mind right now because that is an old memory. And Andrea and I brought that up. Andrea, my wife, said something about Holiday House that I have yet to try myself, but I want to. She was like, "Do you remember they would have bread?" But it wasn't garlic bread. Nah, it was a loaf of bread like that was buttered, butter. and they put paprika Hell butter yeah. on it. And Andrea's like, can we just buy a loaf of French bread and throw paprika butter? But it on was it? it was it wasn't French bread. It wasn't dense. It, wasn't. it was light. It was light. It, but the mints at the end were the best. Yes, they had these mints. Those you know those chalk mints that you eat as a kid, and when you put them in your mouth, they dissolve and they just become nothing. Yes, they're, yeah, they're yeah. old people love them. It, they, they were there. They're always pink and green and blue. That's it. You Easter, get like Easter colors. colors. Yeah, and they're year round. And you go up there, they have a little spoon. There was no COVID. There yeah, were no when you're diseases. a little fat kid, Everyone they let you eat as many. Oh, sweetheart, yeah. take some more of these. You take a couple scoops there, darling. You, you eat all your roast beef. Welcome to Holiday House. Yeah, it was like all the stained glass everywhere. They had these horrifying paintings of their family members, like where their faces were disfigured, and it was just scary. What exactly is a sugar plum? <laughs> oh, well, boy, that's when a man and a woman love each other. They do a thing oh, called the sugar plum. I don't like because I don't know exactly. Like all I can think of. What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? All I can think of. It, my mom used to eat these. Uh, oh, careful! <laughs> these careful. Orange slices that were just, uh, I guess, sugar goo. That was <laughs> had sugar dust on the They're outside. They're called orange slices. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. They're like gummies, right? Yeah. So I well, kind of. They're not. They don't have the spring back. The gummies do. They have less of a, a spring back and more of a pure a a, a gelatin bite through. You can see your tooth. You so, know, like see the tooth marks. What I think is a sugar plum is one of those, like the consistency of that, but shaped as a bell with sugar on the outside. Or <laughs> shaped like a plum. <laughs> is, that I right? no, I, yeah. but, is that, do you know what, what an actual sugar plum is? Honestly, I don't. Man, who, <laughs> what is a sugar plum? That's a good thing. It's basically <laughs> just candy with hardened sugar around it. I made fun of you. In the shape of a small <laughs> You know, I made fun of you, but I had no answer for you. <laughs> it's, but it, is it shaped like a plum? Yeah, is it like a, plum? a tiny plum. Oh, okay. not a plum. Where are we at no. as a I've never society? Seen one. <laughs> Eric, there's lots know, of songs. Show Canada. us your plums. Where are we at with plums in society right now? Are we? Do we eat them? I do rarely see Because there plums. was a time. Hold on. A prune is a dried plum, right? Mm, I'm going to have to get back to you on that. I think a prune is a dried plum. A, is a date a dried yes. fig? No. A fi <sighs> Welcome oh, back to Dried Fruit with Tom and Dan. <laughs> Sam is busy as hell over on there. We're trying to sell the sizzle yeah. of Krampus week at Hollabox. And nothing, Come try our prunes. Yeah, nothing gets crazier than uh, we're talking about sugar plums and prunes, Holiday house and prune juice. Raisins, well, if someone ordered juice. a bowl of prunes, would you give it to them? <laughs> if I had it, I love prunes. I've mm. never had a prune. My great aunt lived with us growing up, and she had to eat prunes every night. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because of the pain pills. I didn't know until oh. I was older. Oh. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Chef, 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 you are Indian. But I love, <laughs> I love a, a bowl of steamed um, prunes. I'm so icing <laughs> out, I need my prunes, or I'm gonna, things going to come out of me sideways. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so, uh, what kind of it's holiday? Fruit. <laughs> the chairs are calling it Fruit Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. Sam, write it down. We're going to do Fruit Tuesday for a while. I'm okay with it. <laughs> so thank you, Chef Pat, for your uh, your knowledge. Speaking of treats, what kind of holiday treats uh, can you get a hollow box? Like, uh, what's the traditional German, uh, I guess, cake or treat that people should get for Christmas? So the super traditional is uh, Weihnachtsstollen or uh, Christmas Stollen. It's uh, kind of like a fruit cake bread loaf. Uh, with raisins and cranberries. Yeah, right, and, down. Stolen? Uh, like stolen. How the Grinch stolen Christmas? How the Grinch stolen Christmas. Yeah, and it's got a big tube of marzipan going down the center. Yeah, boy. Yeah, what is that? that? And um, rum. Almond Great. paste, marzipan. Okay. Let me see this guy. And this then... Football, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, Dude, this it's is dense. dense. Yeah, this is like... Okay, this is what I'm talking Let's about. You get you this. Do. You need to load this up on a Saturday morning. With a big You just cup need of like coffee. a slice of that, like a yeah. one finger, maybe two fingers oh, worth. Wow. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> this hey, is Tom Brady. He, that's <laughs> not been deflated. That thing is this guy are way PSI too high on that. I mean, what is this? Two pounds? <laughs> yeah, like, more than that. I think it's more. Like it does not seem like you would think that this is Did they roll light. in the sugar? Did the Germans go like I know what to take that makes yeah, this taste of It's coated in powdered sugar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But gingerbread, Leibkuchen, uh, all kinds of uh, candies Leibkuchen. and cookies. <laughs> you're forgetting you're oh. the alcohol. Oh, and and booze, <laughs> Glühwein, of course. We've had that. That's right, good. right. The the spiced mold red wine, um, lots of lots of brandy, brandy filled chocolates. Um, what else we, we got? We started to get, man, you guys left us some of those uh, cordials. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, we, my, we, Sean we, almost ate we, one. We, we <laughs> ate too many. No, I ate too many of them, man. You're they're not, rich. I, yeah, they're you're not, rich. I don't think you're supposed to go sideways on those and eat like nine at a time. No, Germans eat like one candy, and this is this is enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'm satisfied. I should have let Max eat it, right? <laughs> like, you think, ain't going mean, to do anything. Not, but like, yeah, it's fine. He would get real quiet. <laughs> 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 Start thinking about his thoughts. I mean, you know, 20 years ago, more than that, I guess, or 20 years ago, still the 2000s. God damn, I'm I mean, old. 20, <laughs> 20 years ago. It seemed like Stop I was going time. past in the 90s when I said 20 years ago. 42 years ago, <laughs> I went <laughs> to my uh. neighbor's house, the Bolin's house, and Mrs. Bolin and Mr. Bolin, his name was Clarence, and they were watching me for the day when my mother went to Trinity United mm -hmm. Methodist Church to practice her organ music because she had some <sighs> weddings coming up and she had like to play some funerals or some weddings. So people would suggest certain music. She'd have to go in there and knock the dust off a little bit, make sure she could play it. So they dropped me off at the, the Bolin's house, and Clarence uh, was a drinker, and he uh, would just hammer beers like the way I like to do it, like uh -huh. morning, and you do nine before <laughs> lunch, and you're like, all right, I'm good now. <laughs> yeah, Time yeah. to get some work done. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, but he would give me the uh, the after beers, you know, or the first sip. I'd get first sip, and I'd get the end of it, uh -huh. and then I waddled home uh, <laughs> completely plastered. And my uh, mom, I uh, was slurring my words. I couldn't walk. I was falling over. <laughs> I was sleeping. And that was the last time I went to stay with the Bolins. Well, <laughs> I, I remember always hearing, and I think it's still the case, right? In, like, Europe, like, you just, you ha you could have a pint at, like, 13 years old. Like and it's, it consider, okay. it's not a faux pas. It it's like, oh, it's like fine, a or whatever. stereotype that European children on their way home from school <laughs> stop by ye old pub it and get, like, a low ABV 2% <laughs> beer just because they had a rough day. That's what it sounds like in my brain. Yeah, yeah. Or you're drinking wine uh, at yeah. dinner when you were nine. And, and then your, your dad's like, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. We're so, all celebrating. We're Europeans. We're different than Americans. The Europeans, they're taught not to abuse it. It's, you know, it's an accompaniment. It's, it's part of their life. It's not yeah. Oh, I get to go do something like no, like you have a have a glass of wine in the afternoon, or you you have a beer with your bratwurst. Yeah. You know, it's just it's part of it, and it's not a big deal. I like to have some bratwurst a, with my nine beers. It accompanies the taste of dinner and uh, how you're supposed to enjoy the whole process, right? Just like Hollerbox, it's part of the experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some music. We still got music. We're still going to yeah. have the entertainment. Um, how long have they been playing at Hollerbox? Uh, Jimmy and Eckhart. Yeah. Oh gosh! So Jimmy has been playing, I think, almost the whole twenty years. Uh, he started just on Saturday nights when Theo and Linda bought it twenty years ago. It was like a lunch cafe, 
and then they started doing like German Nights. Yeah. And it that German Night picked up into what Hollerbox is. You know, novelty T shirt for Hollerbox where you have Jimmy and Eckhart on the front that said Jimmy Jet and the Eckharts. <laughs> I'm working I'll work I'll flesh it out. I'll flesh it out. But something novelty where they're on there. And like. then uh, Eckhart just happened to show up. So Jimmy and Theo knew each other. They worked at Dieter Schnitzel House downtown Orlando uh back in the eighties. Dieter 80s. Schnitzel House in the eighties. Yeah. Oh, that would be a cool throwback shirt to have. Yeah, one hundred percent, dude. Um, Eric, get on that. Yeah. Um, but he, uh, Jimmy, started playing at the restaurant. Eckhart showed up and would. Just, I need something to do. Yeah, him and Theo would sit and drink, and then Eckhart would get up and sing a song or two with Jimmy. They're so talented. And I love hearing them. So mm. Eckhart picked up like the Alp horn. He picked up and taught himself how to play that. What? He took lessons for embouchure for his uh, tuba. It's a, like a tuba tip on the end of that thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's full. It's super precise. It's full on actual. You have to know how to <laughs> blow a horn. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Uh, like a to get the tone out, or the uh, the the Glockenspiel, the big wooden laughter, all all that stuff he taught to play himself, you know, later That's in life. Nuts. This is his retirement gig. Dude. That's awesome. So Eckhart's, Eckhart's like seventy two or seventy three. Well, I don't look it, and it makes That's it, unbelievable. It's the best garnish for the food. For some reason, I would have never guessed that, but. There are only two in my mind. I'm sure that this is cultural for most cultures, like true cultures. Yeah, yeah. Where if you add that music of that culture while you're dining and celebrating the culture and the people of the cult, like it just feels better. Like when I'm eating Mexican food, if there's a real mariachi band there, I'm like, oh my god, this is the best thing. <laughs> yeah, when, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. when I'm eating German, where do you food, get that? And Jimmy and Eckhart are up there and they're using strange German instruments. They're doing like kind of like a little comedy, lighthearted skit. I'm I'm ticky tocky and you know, I'm yelling. You know, like it yeah. adds das to boot. yeah. Makes Beer go down easy. It just makes it better, man. It and just to peel back the curtain just a little bit. Uh, you know, they're a good you know distraction, so we can cook all the food like from scratch. You That's know? true. So people wait a little. I bit never longer thought about than, that. Yeah, you know, they can uh, uh, you know have an extra beer, and then Chef Pat, Chef, you know, like, get out there and give everything. me a nine minute song. I'm well, in the weeds. Yeah. You well, know, you know, <laughs> we'll, I'll I'll put them on break if tables are staying too long. <laughs> that, uh, behind the behind the mouse magic here. Hey, hey, Jimmy, I need you to go on break. Because people are done paid out, they're just yeah, enjoying yeah. the show. You, yeah, yeah. But then yeah, once yeah. that like break Vegas in the music, at that point, get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah. You know, they take that break. People that are paid, they get yeah. their stuff and they get out, and I can fill those yeah, tables. It's back a up. nice way of saying, "Hey, we'd like to get a few more faces." In Every here. twenty minutes, Jimmy, yeah. go on break. <laughs> <laughs> and and if anybody hasn't been to Hollowbox in a you while, gotta go. and, and this seen is the, the, time. Re the renovation, uh, the rooftop, beautiful weather for the rooftop oh right now. Yeah, beer garden, like yeah, go up to the rooftop, go early, and then have some beers at the rooftop beer garden. You don't need and to then, go anywhere else. You can start up there and then kind of wander your way down for have, like your food and everything. And then when you're done, walk around Sanford. And then go to the market and pick up some stuff for or the holidays. Or vice versa. Whatever. Start at 10, get breakfast at the market and ah, have an espresso. Oh, that's a good Then idea. wander over to the to the restaurant. Maybe watch a little uh, Bundesliga or a little yep. uh, Champions League or something like that. Uh, have a couple beers and a pretzel. It's a great it's a great way to experience Sanford. Uh, I'm telling you, I mean, we've been saying this for a while, but the 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 amount of growth that Sanford has uh, gone through in the past, you know, five years is amazing, and uh, it's becoming, like I said, the Key West of Central Florida with sure. uh, with all the great restaurants and and bars and cool places to go. But I will say that if you guys did have as much nudity as Key West, it would be less <laughs> disgusting. I was saying you say must that. not have been at uh, Sanford Pride Week last week <laughs> no, last was year. It nude? Was it nude? Crazy? No, no, no. no. Uh, <laughs> uh, Chef Pat Eric, thanks so much for stopping yeah, by. It's embarrassing that I would say that. He says that. I'm like, were they nude? <laughs> and w when you show me pictures, when you go to Hollow Box, uh, ask for the Tom and Dan gummy bears. Yep. Uh, yeah. We got two Tom and Dan or uh, gummy like, bear pens. Gummy bear pens. Yeah, yeah. Not just uh, gummy bears. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> when did we get our own gummy bears? Yeah. I was like, this guy's been holding out on me. It's my favorite treat. I eat way too many. You're gummy the blue bears. one. And uh, I eat way too many gummy bears. <laughs> and uh, ask for Chef Pat, and uh, he likes it. Yeah, and he'll come by and uh, give it to you personally. And uh, yeah, I love talking to you guys yep um guys thanks so much yeah. um, thank you so much for coming in happy holidays to you guys i know that will we see you again or is this the is this our big one i think this is it for the this rest is of it year. for the year yeah, well, hey. back again in january we love you guys we hope your families have wonderful days and, too, and yeah. please wish theo and everybody there uh you know give them love from tom and dan and um or us i didn't have to go third person there that, that, was, that was weird, weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was weird <clears throat> tell tom and dan if you see Tom and Dan, tell them we said hey. <laughs> uh, I'll do say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. Welcome to Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Dan. Our producer Samantha's here. The fish, the uh, the gentleman that handled our fish came last night. Yeah. We have a new technician. Uh, he is a very attractive uh, muscle oh. man. Very attractive <laughs> okay. muscle man. 
And wow. it was, I'll just say this. You it watch was him on the video. Joy <laughs> watching him clean our tank. Don't, don't watch. I watch Muscle <laughs> Men clean our tank. Is there a playback there? Can I watch it? Yeah, I'll p- watch it with you. Okay. Uh, We're going to have to be in separate rooms, though, because, you know. That's fine. I uh, I'm, I like to leave a tip for those guys. I just, yeah, well, yeah, we yeah. just the tip. <laughs> before we, before we get to our guest, I have one more thing that I have to mention. Do we that put a 20 on the top of the tank? We should put a 20 on the top of the tank. We need to do something for our cleaning lady from Her Majesty's Services, and here's why. I see that somebody's at the office, right? I see the, the alarm go off that somebody's oh. in the office. It was on Thanksgiving at like 5 p.m. Oh my God! Our cleaning lady. Oh, they cl- came on Thanksgiving. They came on Thanksgiving, but at the time when everybody else was like, "Well, eating their sh- dinner, should we eat?" And they're like, "Well, I guess I'll Scrub clean the toilet yeah, at like the T and D studio." Oh, 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 it's not yeah. even open. It, Why? Yeah. Yeah. Like, T and D studios are. <laughs> it was yeah. very sad. So I'm gonna get pros. her a gift card because yeah, yeah. she's oh, yeah. lovely. She's a beautiful woman. But anyway, it is uh, Weird Job Wednesday time, let's buddy. Um, let's. Uh, where is it? Where's my button? Okay, here we're Weird Jobbing. That's a true story about the cleaning lady. Tom wanted Sad. to do a bit. He called it Weird Job Wednesday. Dan really likes it. Tom says that's bullshit. It's another Weird Job Wednesday. What are you doing? What is your job? Are you neat? Are you tidy? Or are you a fat slob? Do you make lots of money and you sit up in your tower looking down on all the people who are working by the hour? It's a weird job Wednesday. Just another weird job Wednesday. Oh yes, it's weird job Wednesday. Another weird job Wednesday. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Weird job Wednesday brought to you by Streamline Florida. If you want to refi or you need a mortgage, talk to uh, Brian Zymel and his team. They will help you out. Uh, just give them a call. They can tell you if it's a good idea over the phone. Uh, with very few uh, pieces of information, they'll be like, "All right, either you're, you know, you refi and yeah. get this rate." It's a uh, simple process. Take, it doesn't take a lot of time to contact Brian Zymel. Take money out of your house, the equity, pay off credit cards, whatever you want. Just talk to them, and they'll figure out if it's a good deal for you. Me and Daniel have done it. And hundreds of BDMs uh, have done it. Um, so on the line with us, we've got Daddy Applesauce. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, obviously, this uh, is a... That's the only name I remembered. I'm sorry. Twitch <laughs> username, Nicholas. Uh, uh, Nicholas. Um, hey, what's up, Nicholas? Thanks for uh, joining us on Weird Job. What is your weird job? Thanks for having me. No, I, uh, I am the owner of a human capital management firm based out of Gainesville, Florida. Um, I have no idea what that is, but I'm intrigued. It, uh, the fact it's called human capital management. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is legal. Your human. capital is humans? This yeah, is yeah, legal yeah. human trafficking. <laughs> <laughs> That's my guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds <laughs> like you have some sort of control. It sounds like you're using us as batteries to help <laughs> the aliens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In a matrix like scenario. Human capital, and he's in a bunker. Maybe we shouldn't yeah. do this. <laughs> this is a harsh one. I've yeah. never seen a man so hell bent on destroying the world called in for weird job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So explain to us what that means. So basically what that is, is uh, we, uh, we we do a plethora of services from like payroll to accounting to HR. Oh, to all the stuff payroll. nobody wants to do. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, oh, there is a market for this, yeah. man. This is cool. All right. Um, also, uh, Nicholas- can you help? Tom, get my paycheck to get to me on time. <laughs> that's not on that's him. A problem. That's like supply that's chain. That's on Wachovia. We don't, we're out of checks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I put it in the system. I have no it's idea true, how because mine, Mine's later than yours. You, my last check came 17 days late. I'm like, 17 days? That's yeah, I could have yeah. lost my house in 17 days. And it came with a note. It's like, wait three days to cash it. Oh, my God. And it was signed. Pro- Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, providing it's not a bank problem, yeah, I can absolutely help you with that. 17 days. Yeah, 17 days. Tom yeah, always can, forgets our check. <laughs> <laughs> can you help me for free? That's the most important mm. part of it. Uh, I can want, he grift you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, we, we might be able to work something out. All right. So, Nicholas, how did you start this? I can automatically tell just by a short conversation with you. A smart cat. Yeah, that you're smart. Yeah, Same you thing with Juan it. and stuff. Yep. Like you, when you talk to a smart person, like instantly, instantly. after uh, you know five sentences, you're like, yeah. this guy is a very smart person. You, you <laughs> have a good, than me. You have a good I, sense of humor. You don't take yourself too seriously, and I can already look at you and tell that you're not afraid of hard work at all. Like you're like, I'll work. I'll do whatever it yeah. takes. Not a big deal. Like you can. You're right. You can see those things in people. And also, you, I can, I feel the embarrassment if I explain to you how this business runs. Yeah, yeah. So Tom stepped aside. It's a first. Because I can tell by the way you're building your business, you have an idea, some yeah. sort of plan. He's got a plan, there's, an outline. <laughs> there's an outline. There's yeah. something. I mean, you can leave it written look at, down. Yeah. Look at him on the screen. I mean, just the he got, uh, he's got a he got a whiteboard. He's got calendars back there. He's got what appears to be a picture of his family, so you know he loves somebody. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of good back there. Yeah, you have a map of Florida. <laughs> well, that's a place. That's a place. Those are the he, targets. That's yeah, where he wants to <laughs> yeah, yeah, bomb. Yeah. So yeah. Uh-oh, there's one in the studio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do see a massive bullseye near the studio. Flames. You drew a lot of flames on that with yeah, that yeah, red yeah. sharpie. There's yarn and little uh, pins yeah. and all this and bingo bongo. And then I looked up on your ceiling and you wrote around the edges of the walls a different manifesto. <laughs> it goes in a circle. This is it, good for his business. Until it reaches the center where oh. it just has the word Satan written real large. That's the problem when BDMs do these things. I so know. we can't help but He's make a fun of too. you. He's and on the BDM hook. He's stage. a hook of satanic yeah. hookup. <laughs> we like making fun of smart, nice people. <laughs> it's terrible. Our, we don't like it. We just specialize in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But we think you like it, but we know you don't. Yeah. I mean, we see you laughing, but it could be you could be crying. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have no idea. So, how do you go about building this business? Where, where does it start? Oh man, you just got to get nice and mad. I think that's the, probably the best way to do it. Well, that's how I do it. It is a stink. It's all a part of the year. Apart. I'm mad every day, and it doesn't help me. When everybody uh, it's just like, why are you so mad? I'm like, I'm trying to work. Yeah. How long ago <laughs> did you start this? And like, did it come out of like, did you see the need? Were you already working in it? And what made you decide? Well, yeah, I think I can do this. Yeah, I did see the need and I was working in it. So I, long story short, I, I, I started working for uh, Bank of New York Mellon, like right out of college. I got like stupid lucky and I did. I, I got stupid lucky working. I got drunk with a guy from a bar and he like uh, introduced me to his dad and I filled out like an application and his dad talked to me and he's like, you know what? I'm going to give you a chance. You seem highly intelligent. Like, same same thing you guys just Hold on. I think, I think your bomb's ready. <laughs> <laughs> you better take your bomb out of here. Don't be overcooking those bombs. They'll go off. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. I can't help myself. Nah, so I just got super lucky, man. It, literally just a, a series of luck. I, 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 got a, I got a job out of college working for Bank of New York, and then I worked for ADP for a while. I got kind of fed up with the corporate thing and said, Hey, I, I know there's more money to be made in this. Like I talk to people who are making more money doing the same thing that I'm doing. And I guarantee you they're working from home. They're getting paid. Why am I not doing this? So I found a company that was basically like payroll mercenaries. Right. And that's some of the stuff that we do. So your payroll person, they come in, they quit, right? You got to process a payroll. Your HR person comes in, they quit, they get COVID, whatever it is my company will pick up the slack. So you call me, we can come through and we can actually take care of that for you. My employees are trained in a plethora of like mainstream software. So in a nutshell, I found this other company doing that. And I said, wait a second. I said, I can do that too. And then my phone started ringing. Hey, how do we get a hold of you? Where are you working now? Well, you can just call me, baby. All right, yeah. Daddy Applesauce. Daddy Applesauce gonna <laughs> change the game. So <laughs> I, I love it, man. Now I imagine the scenario going into like where you meet some guy that owns some casinos in the Ozarks, and then you, because you're super smart, you know how to yeah. funnel the money. Then your wife starts cheating on you. <laughs> then you push your boyfriend out of a window, or, or she did. Did she yeah, do yeah. that? I mean, yeah, because yeah. it seems like uh, you would be very, very valuable to the criminal I'm underworld. Like, That's the guy from Dodgeball. I can't take it seriously. It's the Dodgeball guy. It's the Bateman, right? I can't. I can't do this. I'm out. Uh, so. Basically, you saw a need and in a market that wasn't oversaturated because it seems like uh, a type of business. People don't want to get into businesses that aren't sexy. And I'll explain that like 
everybody wants to own a brewery, right? Texas has like, always been my business, though. <laughs> like, people want to own a brewery. They want to start a podcast. They want to do, they want to uh, own a merchandise company. You know, something. Photographer. Things that sound fun. Yeah. yeah. Photography studio. A bar, it used to be a bar. Like, everybody wanted to own a bar because mm-hmm. that yeah. was, like, the cool oh, thing yeah. to do. And so, like, but yeah. then all these other, like, businesses that make the world run, right? That they're. They, the world runs on Dunkin'. But, it's, <laughs> but it's like payroll's not particularly sexy. It's not a sexy as a bar right like or a brewery or whatever yeah. and so you saw but like, he hey, opened up the world's first sexy payroll called <laughs> coyote payroll <laughs> it's it's like craig from pyro Super. spot like saw that there was a a market for people that knew how to do really good business in the fireworks industry because he saw he looked around he's like man with a little uh, like good business practices, yeah. I can run a successful fireworks well, empire. Yeah, like if because could, everybody else is yahoos yeah, and don't know what the hell they're if doing. If you could streamline, you can't because it's a government deal. But if you could streamline and privatize through like Tom and Dan's DMV, where we have like a sub bar and coffee machine, you just go there and we run it. So, but you can't do that, right? <laughs> That's just not a. It's not a no, thing. Yeah, but yeah. finding something there is, but like, where there's horrible service and then fixing that is a great idea. Or like business is that people don't think about like payroll like uh, a lot of small businesses need someone to run need their payroll payroll's like the, you could make an <laughs> argument that it's the most important thing yeah. because you got to get your employees their money hence the reason that it does mess things up for me a little bit when my check is late it does, no i'm just <laughs> yeah, being yeah, honest yeah, i'll just sure. throw, i'll just tell you what happens my wife complains to me why is ah. your check late i say i don't know i don't know nothing i don't care about nothing she's like i knew that talk to your uh and it's a paper check and then you to gotta your... wait for it to deposit in the bank before you can access <laughs> yeah. your money she's it's like, a whole talk thing to your mom now talk to your can we get some, <laughs> get some direct deposit <laughs> oh, <laughs> Bill Cosby. what oh. year is it <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then i have to take money out of savings <laughs> and i gotta yeah, put you gotta pat, roll it over steal from paul to pay peter whatever that just know when you text me hey my check's late can you check out what's going on i go to sun and I'm like, what's the uh, password again? And then I don't Close even know where to look. <laughs> and then I say, it should be there soon. <laughs> yeah, but I have, accurate. I, I, mean, <laughs> I looked at the computer screen and nothing's happening, but I assure you, it will be there. It's kind of like when your Zoom audio doesn't work, you just stare at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> you point. <laughs> and then I'm like, well, it should be there any day now. Yeah, Zoom meeting is like, but, point at my ears, point at my mouth, point at my ears, point <laughs> at my mouth, point at camera. Uh, so, uh, Nicholas, do you see a lot of small businesses that deal with the same problems that we deal with we don't know what the hell we're doing you guys keep me afloat that's exactly right (laughs) it's like and if you guys are actually having those problems and that's not like a bovado issue (laughs) if you guys are actually having those problems uh, Bovada. <laughs> that's where I gamble. <laughs> that's who pays my checks. I get to my checks from Bovada, which is weird. But I, you know, I in so Chinese fast. Yang, which is weird. Mm-hmm. Then you got to go to the airport to exchange it. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole thing. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, you know people that uh, are building businesses, they uh, like obviously need you because. There are certain things that you got to sub out. Uh, is, I tell people all the time, like, why are you still doing your own accounting? Like, just get an accountant. Uh, you, like, you're probably shortchanging yourself because you don't know all the tax laws. Like, you get a professional to do certain things. To, it'll actually save you money. You think, like, oh, well, that accountant cost me money. But you could be saving money because you don't know the tax laws because you have no business doing your own accounting, you know? Uh, and true, you know, so people think they're saving 300 bucks and they're actually missing out on 800 bucks or whatever it is. So is that pretty accurate? That's a, yeah, that's you you're spot on. I mean, that's the thing, you know, I, I, and a lot of, I think what I do too is, you know, I, I, I started this and I said, okay, I'm going to target like these bigger clients and I'm going to try to run more mainstream software. And while I am fortunate enough to have one or two of those where I'm finding the best luck is pivoting. So small businesses, right? Anybody who's under 50. So I've had a lot of people come to me, trade work, electricians, contractors, things like that, where literally I'm good at doing what I do, but I don't know lick about payroll or payroll taxes or how to take care of my LLC or my corporation. And that's, that's where we come in. Yeah. 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 And you, you should uh, use a third party company for that stuff because just stick to what you're good at. Um, and, uh, you know, why are you trying to do things that you have no business doing? You're only hurting yourself to save what, like, you know, that's, you know, I've done it before. And like, yeah, I, I think, think every small has, business yeah. as they grow, they learn like, uh, it's just so well, much. Well, it's easier. hard to give up 
I think it's personally hard once you've started something and you're you're kind of enmeshed in it. It's difficult <clears throat> to give up pieces of that. Yeah, you yeah. know, to source it out, give give the role to somebody else. I mean, that's it takes a lot of trust so, to do stuff like that. Nicholas, I'm I'm always fascinated with anybody who works from home because I always scream, "What do you actually do? Like, how many times are you typing? <laughs> like, we don't like like what is it? My uh, my buddy, the wizard, works from home, and I'm like. How many times, like, are you talking to someone on the phone? Are you just typing the whole time? Are you looking at the screen? Like, what are you doing? I don't think I could do it because I think <laughs> I would just it? be like, I think I would be like, what do I have to do today? I'll do it at three. <laughs> I'll get to it. I'll, I'll be going. I do it every day. And then I come home. I work as hard as I can for like a couple of hours and get it all done. Because yeah. how much work do people have? If you had to add up all of your work and condense it into like how much actual like work do you have? It's like office space. It's like 15 minutes of actual work in an eight hour work day. Right. Like for us, it's a little different because I'm on the hook here. Like I can't. Yeah, if you, speed if you count up this, real time audio, you yeah, just yeah, can't yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. So that. So is, in a lot of ways, this is the most difficult job in the world. <laughs> <laughs> we work harder than, than anyone. Most uh, any job. Most jobs. Nurse, COVID nurse, frontline firefighter, police first officer, responders, first responder. Um, Anybody in charity? Yes. Any anybody? <laughs> Any government official? President certainly. Biden? Yeah, yeah, that guy. Uh, Don't give me give me start. <laughs> uh, I'll cut that out. <laughs> sorry, nerd. I don't so, even remember. Sorry, what nerd. Is that, why? Okay, <laughs> I'm so nerd. sorry. He's like, sorry, nerd. Like, why would you say no, that? I here? said Nicholas. <laughs> no, you did you not. Nerd. If no. we go back, you I, said sorry, <laughs> nerd. Uh, and you like? No, I promise I did. I, I went to say Nicholas, and then I had the flip. Nicholas, thing. if I were you, I would stop listening to the program. I wouldn't stand for. He's this. an advertiser. <laughs> I know he is. <laughs> and you called him a nerd. No, I didn't. He's on hookups, and yeah. if you, you want to use Nicholas's Thanks service. Thanks for being on hookups, nerd. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Nicholas knows. Um, so uh, how do people find out and contact you, Nick? <laughs> uh, best thing to do, go to my website, hcmtitans.com, and uh, drop us a Hey, line. you see them I tight ones? <laughs> is that what it is? Hey, I see them H tight ones. HCM, human capital management. So HCM, Titans, T-I-T-A-N-S, or just head on over to the hookups like page that. at Tom and Dan. That sounds... Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We should be T and D Titans. titans. Yeah, no, yeah. we gotta can't oh do. We can't God. find his style. We're like T and D. Uh, what's well, another kind of a Titan? Uh, a hero? A Viking? Okay. No, 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 Viking? No, 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 Viking. Titan. Um, warriors. Guys are podcast War titans. Uh, warriors. Um, all right, Nick. Uh, we'll uh, we'll talk to you later. We appreciate you being a hookup. Um, yeah, man. Uh, good luck building your business. But you don't need luck. You're smart. You'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How rich do you think? It. Hold on, he's gonna Nicholas. get rich, real rich. Yeah, yeah. Like, how can you get rich enough to get a cigarette boat and put payroll money on the back? That's all yes. I ever wanted. Titans. That's my dream. Okay, okay. that's that all. Works. That's the only reason I've done this. It, it's not about my family. It's about a cigarette boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as long as you have your priorities straight, I think you'll be just fine. And uh, and you grow everything. These type of companies, you get to a certain point and sell next, it off. Next thing you know, yeah, yeah. Is oh, that's the thing. You, you sell it off, right? Can, is that the goal? Is like, someone going to come in and offer you like three point one million, and then you just uh, cash out and then just dabble in some other stuff? Uh, yeah, then you're a consultant at that point. <laughs> I've always wanted to get to the level of consultant, which really just means I'm rich and lazy. <laughs> I'm living off my money, and I'm going to go around telling people. And it may yeah. not even be stuff that's helpful to you. It's just I have just to get gas money for yeah. your boat. I have gotten to a point where whatever worked for me may or may not work for you, but I'm going to yell it at you and get and people are going to pay me to do that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just your reputation alone. It doesn't even matter if you what no. they. Most people that hire consultants don't do what the consultant. No, does. they never do. They hire the consultant. The consultant comes in and says, "Well, you got to fire this guy." I'm like, well, we can't do that. That's the guy. And then they're like, "Well, I don't know what to tell you." And they're like, "You don't know we, nothing." Uh, told <laughs> they paid you for that. We anyway. actually do that. So we'll have. I'll get calls occasionally that says, "Hey, I need to lay off like 50, 60, 70 people." Can you guys do it? And they'll actually hire us to come in. So there are some days where oh, I'll like literally office just space. <laughs> like literally and talk office to space? people I don't know and just fire them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is it that you do here? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Although that's easier to yeah. fire a stranger, right? Yeah. Than than the, the person that's been working that you with see you for every three day. Years. Yeah. yeah. That you watch eat her lunch in the break room, and uh, Sally has like got a uh, a husband and uh, some kids, and you have to fire her. like easy to fire a stranger. That I never even thought of that companies did that. Like that you've hire. seen Office Space. I thought that was in, in a movie as oh, a joke, man. like a, a giant corporation or bringing a, like people just to fire their employees. 
No, well, we got I, the idea from Office Space. So. <laughs> yeah, oh, I like that. Anybody ever started like crying, begging for their job back? You better help me, yeah. Mad Bomber. <laughs> <laughs> it gets messy. I mean, you know, it really does get messy. You know, it's what's interesting is you can always kind of go back and say, you know, hey, listen, I'm, I'm just the HR guy, right? You've never seen me. I've never seen you. Here's the paperwork. Here's the packet. You know, you take it. They they get it out. You know, and you say, hey, you know, I. You, I same thing. I think you're smart, and I think you're going to do fine in the future, and maybe this didn't oh, work. You're lying, no, you're lying, You're lying to people. Oh, my God, man. <laughs> you have no idea See, if they're we smart. we lying to you because you're smart. Like, I could look in your eye, and you're like, this guy's got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so many people I look at, I'm like, oh, <laughs> look at that person. Yeah, yeah. Yuck. Like, this will be a hindrance in your life. Yeah. I'm <laughs> you like, have a rough time I'm finding like, another career. Some people you look at them, and you're like, I don't know if you're going to get another one. This is your one. <laughs> Although, easiest time to fire people nowadays because there's so many jobs available, it's not like uh you know we're in a recession where jobs are hard to find it's like go out there and find a, any job you want right every company's hiring so it, i guess any job will do nowadays it's not that bad no people have been you would notice a lot of people their their response was well i was gonna quit anyways Hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, by the time you're calling me and problem, you know, you've got problems. So that's what they all say, though. Yeah, <laughs> they were riding out yeah. forever. Nick. Yeah, you I, know. I feel like if you were, then you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I you brought lunch today, which leads me to believe you were not going to quit. I was. I, <laughs> you brought a, a half of a pizza. I always had it by your desk. I saw it. <laughs> yeah, you're fucking lying. Yeah. Oh, oh Nick, you're cursed on yeah, the radio. You got comfortable. I like this yeah. guy. <laughs> Uh, I always had a I quit chambered in case I saw management at the radio jet, like waiting for me when I, I walked out. Yeah, yeah. So at least I'd get the satisfaction of quitting before they fired me. Because you know, once they call you in the office, just quit. No reason to go through the office. Awkward... No, no, just don't go to the office. Just get, unless they <laughs> just have be a like, cake. I... <laughs> <laughs> Why does anybody even go to the office? Just be like, I know what's happening. I'm out of here. Bye bye. Like I... you have to sit there and be told. Uh, I did like, that for uh, my exit interview. I did that for my exit interview, and then I had one other thing to do with HR, and I'm like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> and they're like, You have to do it. I'm like, I no, mean, what yeah. if I don't show up? What are you gonna? Do? You're not gonna arrest me. I mean, <laughs> you don't have to do anything. And I didn't do it, and then yeah. nothing happened. I, uh, I'm virtually certain they took all my files and just punted them in the trash. <laughs> anyway, right? Like, why would you even keep that? Yeah, they just erased your existence. Of yeah, they just room. put you in the trash. They like, keep it for one year in case you sue, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, God, where do we put that? That's He's all. suing. Yeah. All right, Nicholas, uh, we appreciate the uh, interview today. And sorry we made fun of you so much, but you're a nice guy. You know. It's all good. Thank you guys for having me. And... Uh, Seriously, if you guys are having some payroll things, email me. We'll, we'll work it out. Okay, All right. yeah, we'll cool. shoot cool. you an email. And uh, you can find him on hookups as well. There yep. you go. Awesome. All right, man, have a good rest of your day, and thanks for the time, okay? Thanks, guys. All, All right, right, man, be good. All right, we'll be right back. Welcome back to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Dan. Samantha is here, and we still have a dead fish oh. that is in the, the fish fan. I saw that. I, you know, I kind of like it. No, it's gross. It's, That's probably I, what's stinking up the studio. No, no, no. Follow me with this. I kind of feel like having a dead fish in the fan spreads like his guts throughout the tank, making the tank more like the true ocean. <laughs> oh, God. Right? Because right? like yeah, yeah. in the true ocean. Oh, they're dead fish oh, it's, parts it's everywhere. It's just poop and death, right? And pee. Yeah, yeah. It's disgusting. Isn't it? Like, it is, but I never <laughs> think about it being disgusting. On the bottom of the ocean, you hear people talk about like uh, when they light it up, that it looks like it's snowing because of all the the ocean poop and debris mm. and everything. Like all, It just slowly sinks down to the bottom till it gets to like, up. A, a tiny snow-like particles that just forever rain on the bottom of the ocean, and that I think that is more like they. Oh, we should get that a bunch of doo doo rain. That's all I'm saying. Doo doo <laughs> rain. Let's do some uh, voicemail. <laughs> all right, voicemails. Don't have an intro for that. Look down like I did. First voicemail. I got to pull these up. Apologize, guys. I'm a little. Uh, I'm a little off my game today, but I assure you, I will be back momentarily. Let's go with this one. That Seems to be we have solved the old park and bark debacle. No. What up, Tom, Dan, Sam, Butler? Um, this Monday on the BDM show, you guys were talking about the park and bark fly um, parking place for the airport. Well, when I was back in school, I actually went to elementary, middle, and high school with uh, the daughter of the owner. 
for that park and bark location and we were actually really good friends and this guy was a fucking millionaire they were loaded i mean i guess he probably has more than one location like that but i think it might be time to start your own bdm park and bark anyway love the show later not a bad idea. Mm. Well, first you got. Well, you can put those everywhere, right? The parking bar. Yeah, well, but you, I mean, you need the land. Well, it's got to be near an airport too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if we're not so, near an airport, but there's like, a lot of land by the airport. Yeah, but most of it. We need up. the capital, though. We need more yeah, airports. Yeah. I mean, so if you. What about this executive airport? Nobody. We well, don't need parking. <laughs> they don't, yeah, they don't need a <laughs> there's giant hardly parking. any uh, planes that yeah. go out of there. So, like, if if your family had, like, like you inherited this land after generations because they old Floridians that had, like, a bunch of land and they built the airport. Well, you, you have some of that in your own family, right? Where people that have, like, My pop generational some, Florida property. Yeah, had some property in St. Cloud, uh, you know, we bought in the 60s and stuff. Like, but that happened. I mean, that's how, like, TM Ranch and, like, some old Floridian ranchers and stuff, they're multimillionaires just because they got passed down hundreds of acres of prime real estate and they just slowly piece it off and sell it to developers you know for like five million at a time yeah. and it's just like some cattle land that they have yeah but it's like if you have that you just pave it and then if it's near the airport and then now your only expense is what electricity some employees to run the front when gate. we were there there was like, one employee when like, you and i used it we drove yeah. up and there was like a electronic. guy in a box well, there was one guy. Okay. Yeah. Just, just like a something. storage unit. You just need one person. Or like front. a laundry, yeah. like a coin laundry. Yeah. Same and, thing. And think about how, I mean, uh, the, you know, the park, like the entire parking lot is full because of holiday travel. Like every parking space is paying 15 bucks a day for, you know, how many parking spaces do you have? Like 300? And like then during I'm, holidays, you can spike the prices. Yeah. And then you got boat and RV storage in the back. Like, is that like, it's just continual passive income yeah. just flooding your bank account. So of course you're rich, right? And and how much maintenance do you have to do? How many problems do you have? You don't have like a bunch of employees and have to order food. Like it's the exact opposite of a restaurant, right? The restaurant even, is the most or, stressful or business. Or even retail. You know, oh, like yeah. I used to know some brothers, you knew them, the guys that owned all those different um, stores in Daytona Beach. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And it's right there, Oceanside. It is pristine. I mean, you don't, that's the best property, right? Like big commercial on the ocean, you know, uh, commercial properties. And they have like nine of them or something. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it was Always chaos because they're running so much like jeans and shirts and hats. Yeah, it's apparel. Just, it's yeah, too yeah. much. It's you just to, too much. And then you have to get rid of the overages and, and the, the, the and employees. And you're turning yeah. them over constantly because you have to have like 15 people let's, in the store. We should let's try to figure out what's the most profitable, easiest business to run besides this one. <laughs> like, what is like? It has to be one of those parking places, right? Because you got one in, or I mean, how many employees? I'm starting to think it's that mystery vending I've never company. Parked at one I'm of them. starting to think mystery vending's got something because I see our listeners. <laughs> yeah, but that's not a lot of money. They're, yeah, yeah. I put like ten dollars at a pop. Yeah, but it's so it's a small margin. I and then you got to travel to each location nice. to replenish. You get some money to do that. I want a thousand vending machines. That would be so fun. <laughs> yeah, but there's still like a lot, and then ones break, and you got to order more. Like the parking is. I mean, what breaks? Like the machines, like I guess the, anything in the guard gate. But other than that, it's like you you got to spray the lines every five years when they get faded. Right, like, right. And it's just cash continuing. Like, well, Park non- Park, when we went there, it was, non-stop there business. were no lines. It was just like where it was like a field of concrete and it was just yeah. park wherever you want. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the exact opposite of, of running like a restaurant or some stressful business where there's tons of employees and like uh, customers like bitching about everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, what? Who's gonna bitch at the park and bark? Like, once you pay and you park. What could go wrong? Like der- a bird doo-doo in your car? Like you can't blame the company for that. Like what else could happen? I guess they have to have security so yeah. they, no one breaks in the cars. But that's easy. One or two junkyard do dogs. Do those places, <laughs> do people still use the the, the roaming around Doberman Pinschers <laughs> of no. the 80s? Junkyard, Bithlow Junkyard, yes. They they definitely have junkyard dogs in Bithlow. Are the dogs just roaming around and there are they are killing they machines? Well, now cameras are so cheap. Uh, I would assume just everybody has cheap ass ring cameras everywhere, yeah. like that HD video straight to their phone. Like everybody has that, including the park and bark. Who's and- got the most? Like, do you have that one friend that has like camera? Like Seth is kind of well was. Oh yeah, yeah. he has close cameras everywhere. I know, but I think he huh. not as many as he used to have. Like when he was living at the other house, not this one, but the other one, he was 
uh, oh. psychopath about it. Oh, in every bedroom, yeah, every bathroom, I, <laughs> everything at a Samantha, camera. Samantha, you mm-hmm. seem like you'd be a camera woman, right? Like, uh, I just have the doorbell camera. It's the most insulting thing you've ever said to her. <laughs> Although <laughs> I have been looking at other cameras. Okay, so. well, what, what's you in the market for? Tell I don't me. know. I'm, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, like your level of paranoia. <laughs> look, I have more paranoia than you. Yeah, I want a couple I'm of cameras. I'm in Sam's I do have a security system. Yeah, I'm yeah, in camera. Like you, you don't even say your security system. Should I not say that on the air? There's a camera in my kitchen. I guess technically. I like my wife's got a paranoid too she's got i got a camera in the backyard camera in the back porch camera dude i'm old school i'm little i'm little cable tv danny i have one in the front and i had to be drug me to get that (laughs) well your house is set up in a way it's a townhouse so like maybe a camera in your garage door but other than that like you don't need any like you got houses on both sides of you and the the roof who's getting there parking lot behind you (laughs) yeah yeah. so it's like you know but i've got like a side yard and uh, what are you looking for you looking for the army coming like okay why do you need he's watching raccoons we saw the guy from burn fall in the pool (laughs) why'd you have to bring that and then it's totally worth it and then a pool float will set off crystal's uh chimes on her uh phone every 15 minutes when uh we leave a pool float in the pool and the wind blows it by because the camera will detect motion when Maggie, one of my my mom's peepee dog, when uh, she w- knocks over Maisie's beanbag chair, yeah. it'll set off the entire alarm and the cops show up. We don't have oh. any inside the house cameras, but we have motion detectors. We don't have cameras. I feel like we, we do... have cameras in here to Does see. She... I guess if people break in or doing something they're not supposed to be doing, we have cameras in here. But yeah, it, but this is a business, yeah. And so it's like motion detectors, crash and break, that kind of stuff. We have the people that have the cameras inside their houses, like psychos. Well, th- I think they think people are going to come confront them in their living room and kill them like a video game. Well, if you had like kids and you had babysitters and stuff, I would totally do that. Yeah. Well, Ooh, remember when everybody was trying to catch their nanny, nanny on the cams, nanny cam? Yeah. They're like, put you got to put a teddy. camera in there because your <laughs> nanny is beating the hell out of your child. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, every nanny's yeah. out of control. They're whipping them crazy. And then I feel like that was just a front to get secret spy cameras to see your nanny change. Seriously. Yes. Like it was never. Like, Dude. It was all a marketing thing just to sell cameras. We, had yeah, a nanny, course, we only like, had a nanny for a week, and I've never how, told this story. We had a nanny many? for a week, and we caught her breastfeeding Maisie. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe that? And she wasn't. I'm even joking. That never happened. I made that up. But wouldn't that be crazy if you look on there and like this yeah. lady's not even related? She's <laughs> breastfeeding my daughter. I'm how gonna ma- watch for a second, then I'm gonna stop her. <laughs> <laughs> how mad would you be if that? <laughs> oh happened? my god, dude! I freak out. Would you? I mean, yes. I Press I, charges. Yes, it's charges. Abuse. Yeah, it's assault for feeding right? your baby. You yeah. know that. What if there's no milk though? Yeah, and it's just like. What if it's just sweet, well, sweet essence of smoke? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Th- I mean, if it was a sexual thing, but then- this woman was breastfeeding my daughter against her will. I, I, but I'd be like, uh, how much is Tommy or Max traumatized by that? He, but he doesn't even know the difference. He just can't get some milk. I don't know. Yeah, Brock BDM like, says, not that bad. Uh, just oh, get out we here. actually caught a housekeeper stealing money from my dad on camera as a kid. Big shoulder RCA bastard. They still didn't notice. Oh, what, you were RCA standing there camera. like, <laughs> what, you put it? Okay, so you On put the shelf. big yeah. VHS. Right. Blinking or, red. And your dad's like, <laughs> put a five-hour tape in there. <laughs> <laughs> and just sat there in this videotape to your living room. And what hold what on, did the nanny steal? Right, nothing at one hour. Money. Going to the two housekeeper. Hour. Hand me that. Hit the floor. Fast forward. Go See, to two hour mark. Did you plant the money and freeze? Leave freeze. It? Computer in hands. Go- that's her. I feel like that's entrapment. If you put the twenty on the table, crumbled up like in the ashtray. <laughs> you know, like and that's well, entrapment. Well, that's entrapment because who crumples up a twenty and puts it in an yeah, ashtray? That's like, a trap. And then you and she steals it. That, I, I I don't even blame her, the nanny for that. Like uh, that's on you. You put the twenty there. Like if she's going through your wallet, that's another thing. Yeah, I think a, an excess. If you're not a business, if you're a dwelling. And you have an excess of interior cameras. I do think it's weird. I'm not going to hate. If that's what you feel comfortable with, I understand like, that. Because mm-hmm. there are certain safety things that I feel comfortable with that I'm sure are rank higher than yours. And Sam ranks a little higher than me. Because Sam and I obviously trend higher on the paranoia scale than you do. I When Her Majesty puts, like, I, sometimes I drop money around and change around the office. And Her Majesty will change? put... Change? <laughs> Who has changed? Old and grandpas. Old, old I don't do. want it. I don't even pick it up. And then... I don't even use cash anytime. <laughs> like, wh- why do you have cash? I, every once in a while, like... Paper uh, checks and cash with this and, guy. And our petty cash. I'll be tipping petty and the cash, cash will fall out. <laughs> anyway, I like petty cash. <laughs> I've always... I like petty. 
<laughs> I've always the, my dream was to be a business owner to have a oh just take that out of petty cash. <laughs> yeah, have have give yourself a little pizza party on me <laughs> on uh, Big Daddy uh, Big Daddy Tom. It's the only time I feel like a real business owner is when I go to our petty cash and then get some uh, monies and, and then you tip. hand it to EMS. <laughs> yeah. tip EMS. Thank you for wiping Dan Daniel's <laughs> steering wheel. Anyway, when they put all that in, on the, my desk because they like collected it or whatever. I always think, why didn't you steal that? <laughs> because wow. I, I would never know if you just stole this 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 change and a couple dollars that you put on my desk. Although they would never do that because they're a legitimate great cleaning company. But I do give them permission to steal from us. Yeah. I, no, I, can, I completely. <laughs> I would never even know. If you took the change, they're and so some professional. We'll end with this because I know we got to take a break. And they're, they still won't do it. They're so professional me. that w- they clean our house. And then Andrea's been, you know, like she was off last week for holidays, but they still came one day. And Andrea was there while they cleaned. So she just went down and kind of hung, hung out in her oh, office. You have to hide. Yeah, you have to hide. And then the lady came down and said, Okay, I'm ready to walk you room to room to see if it's adequate. And Andrea started laughing. She's like, no, 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 we're not doing that. I trust you. You're a good woman. Here's your tip. Now, be gone, but that is, we are not doing the old demeaning walk around. Uh-huh. You're too good for that. But it is nice that they provide that, right? Like, hey, if you want to check yeah. my work, I'm uh, I'm accountable. That's really cool, but not necessary in the dentist household. It's like a valet or some, like someone's in your car and they steal your change. Like, I'm fine with it. <laughs> change? I'm, yeah, I'm okay it's with like, the change. Who cares that much? Like, you stole a couple quarters. Uh, you want to hear like? something weird? I mm-hmm. opened my glove box for the first time in apparently months yesterday, and there was an empty Yingling can in there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what? Wow. I don't drink Yingling. Yeah, yeah. That, that's where you put that in there when you, the cops follow you. <laughs> that's what I think I did. So where was I driving? When was this? Where was oh, I? Andrew was driving you around. You're blacked out. <laughs> you're <driving laughs> around. Put this in the car. Get a letter. Yeah, okay, yeah, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Uh, <laughs> bye bye.